Today is all about hand sewing a button. I know you've got something in your wardrobe that needs a button sewn back on it, and I'm gonna show you how to professionally do it and make it look beautiful. So let's get into it. So when you're looking at the buttons on your clothes or at the store when you're buying buttons, you're gonna notice two hole buttons, four hole buttons, and then buttons that have a shank on the back, which means there is no hole on the front. There's basically a little hole or a loop on the back going horizontal. Most commonly, you're going to find a two hole or a four hole button. And today I'm going to be sewing the four hole button, but they're both sewn exactly the same. The first thing you need to do is grab a needle and thread. To thread the needle, you're going to need two feet of thread. So grab two feet of thread and let's thread the eye of the needle. We're gonna take one end of the thread, not both, and we're gonna stick it through the eye of the needle. The eye of the needle is that opening in the one end of the needle. So go ahead, push that through. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. And now what I want you to do is line up both of the thread tails. So you should have two thread tails. So we have two thread tails here and we have that thread going through the eye of the needle, which is at the very end of the needle here. And now what I want you to do is make it into a circle and make the thread tails point towards the tip of the needle. Now we're gonna make a knot on the end of our thread. So I'm gonna show you an amazing way to do this. Pick up your needle, hold it in your right hand, go ahead and take the thread tails and put it under your pointer finger and thumb. That way the thread is making a nice loop and now take the thread, pull it parallel with the needle, wrap it around the tip of the needle about four times, take it and pull it under your thumb and your pointer finger, hold all the thread under these two fingers here and don't let go of that little wrap a thread there and go ahead and pull the needle with your other hand. Keep holding that wrap a thread under your pointer finger and thumb. And when you open up, you're going to have a beautiful knot. We have a beautiful knot on the end of our thread and our thread is securely on our needle over here. Wasn't that easy? Now it's time to sew on that button. So to start sewing the button, we need to get the button on our thread. So the way we're gonna do this is come up from the bottom of the button through one hole and you can't fully pull it because otherwise it just pops right out. So what we need to do is pull it so you have about two inches still on the back of the button. Take your needle, go through the hole across from the one you're in, flip over the button, and then before you fully pull it, I want you to take your needle and go through the loop of thread right here. And now pull, and now the knot is gonna be on the back of your button, and your button is gonna be secure on your thread. So we put the button on, we're going to start from the top of our fabric, stick your needle in and go ahead and pull it. But when we create this button, we want to keep a little bit of a distance off of the fabric. For this one, about an eighth of an inch because we need to be able to fit our buttonhole under the button. So if you're using a really thick fabric, you need to keep your button off the fabric even further. But since we're using a thinner cotton, we only need to keep it off about an eighth of an inch. So to sew this really cleanly, on the back of your project, you basically wanna end up with a speck of thread back here. And the way we're gonna do that is always making sure that we're coming in and out of the same little area. Just make sure it's not the exact same hole, otherwise it will come apart. So now when we're gonna go back through to the front, we're gonna go back in right next to where we came out, flip it up and then go ahead and come back out of that hole. Now we're gonna go through the opposite hole a second time, pushing the needle all the way to the back. And when you turn it over, make sure the needle is coming out roughly in the same area where you came out before. And if it's not, just move it to make sure it is. Your thread on the top should be nice and flat, but still remember to keep that distance off the fabric. And now we're gonna go back through that set of holes one more time. So when you're going back in, again, just that same little area. When you flip it back over, make sure your needle is in the proper set of holes. And for the third time, we're going back down into the opposite hole. Flip it over. Again, reposition your needle to make sure it's in that same little spot. Give it a good pull. And now when we go through to the front, we're gonna come up in the opposite set of holes. So I've already done back and forth three times in this set, and now I'm gonna do three times in the opposite set. We're gonna do it the same way, making sure we stay in that little spot on the back. So now we're gonna go into that opposite hole, push the needle to the back, and if it's not in the right position, just move it over to be in the right position. 
And you'll notice we're ending up with this nice little speck of thread on the back, keeping it really nice and neat. So now we're gonna go back through to the front and we wanna make sure we're coming up in the right set of holes. And because we've left this a little loose on the back so we can create that thread shank later, it's really easy to move it around. So now we're gonna do our second set. And now we need to do it one more time. Okay, so we have went up and down three times into each set. So now what we need to do is create our thread shank, which is going to keep that distance off the fabric for the button. So when you push your needle to the front this time, we wanna come up under the button. So still stick it in that same little area on the back and make sure you are under the button when your needle comes up. So now we have our thread under the button. And what we wanna do is take our thread and wrap it under the button so that way it makes the thread on the top nice and taut and it's going to create a nice little distance for the button to be off of the fabric so that way we can fit a buttonhole under there later. So after you get the thread under the button, it should look something like that. We want to take the needle and go to the back. Again, making sure you're staying in that same little spot. Give it a nice firm pull. Make sure your fabric isn't bunching up. Make sure it's nice and flat still. And now we need to make a knot. So we're gonna go through a little bit of the fabric, pull, but before you fully pull, take the needle and go through the loop of the thread and pull. You get a nice knot. And I want you to do that one more time, just for good measure. Take the needle, go through the loop of thread and pull. And now you can cut your thread off right above your knot. And there we go, we're done. We have a nice little speck of thread on the back. And then on the front, we have a really nice button that has a little bit of distance off the fabric. So that way we can nicely fit our buttonhole under the button. We did it, we hand sewed a button and it looks so good. And now it's time to repair all those loose and broken buttons in your wardrobe. Thanks so much for watching Sew Anastasia today on how to hand sew a button. If you have any questions about it, leave it down below in the comments and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, give it some applause and let me know what your favorite kind of buttons are to sew. And if you're not already a subscriber to Sew Anastasia, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when all those new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching today. And let me know what kind of videos you guys wanna see coming up. I'll add it to my list and make sure it happens. And don't forget, if you're in Chicago, you can come and take sewing classes in my design studio with me. So check those out at sewanastasia.com. And you can also take virtual private lessons as well, so you don't have to be in Chicago. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.